welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Jude Dibley, it is a pleasure to have you join us on We Choose to Thrive. I'm so happy you decided to join us. I'm excited to be here. This is awesome. Thank you for making this possible because, wow, I know your story. So, pretty cool. Uh, it, it's been an amazing journey. So, Joe, can you give us a little bit of story about your past? Just a little bit, just abbreviated version. Yeah. Give us a story. 35 years in one second, here we go. No, uh, <laughs> basically I was born into a family of uh, severe mental illness. It led to some, a lot of trauma and then I was, um, you know, the foster system got, got involved. I ended up being a witness to a very serious crime because I myself was assaulted by the perpetrator and he ended up murdering a little girl I knew and so I was in hiding for 35 years. Wow. Oh my goodness. So I know what you I know some of the stuff that you're doing now. What prompted the change for you, Joe? You know, um, when I went through my second divorce, which was really traumatic for me. I mean divorce is traumatic anyway. And and it seems at times when I talk about that it seems almost odd because here I was trying to survive a man who became a serial killer talking about divorce being traumatic, but the very fabric of who I was was always in question because I was I had 19 names and I moved so many times, but my husband didn't know who I was really. Anyway, the long and the short of it is that that second divorce was the, what I call the demarcation time in my life, and it was February 28th of 2007. I was out walking with a girlfriend. I was living in a different city. I was still in hiding, and we were talking about really about, well, she thought we were talking about the divorce, and we were, but I was really talking about my whole life overall, and she said, what would you do differently if your life could look different? And I said, I'd frock off, which ultimately became the name of my book. And, you know, I knew what it meant, and I knew I was talking about my whole life, but she thought I was talking about the divorce. Um, So that was my demarcation day. I was like, enough is enough. I had spent so many years in hiding, so many years of not being who I was supposed to be, only to, you know, what, Nothing had changed, and I was, and now I was going through another divorce. It really was a, a devastating time, but it was also a time of reckoning and reclamation for me to cross that line and say, "Enough is enough." We all come to that phrase where you just have to say, "This is not working. This is not working at all," and we need to make some kind of change. Mm-hmm. So, tell our audience where you are now. You know, my life now. What a difference. I am finally free. I was able to return back to the province I grew up, well, spent most of my childhood, and I'll say that, which is British Columbia, which I couldn't even do before this all happened. Uh, But I wrote my book in 2013, and I went from being visibly invisible, meaning I was under a different name. I was well-known, but under that name, under that alias, uh, to now being highly visible and successful. And it was because I stood up and said, enough is enough. And it's because I wrote my book. It's because I took, you know, I took courage and conviction to share that story, as you know, because you've done this yourself. Mm-hmm. The truth is, if we want to live fully, we have no choice. So the reason I am where I am now is because I said yes, basically, and said enough is enough. Well, I think it's, it comes a time where you, you need to stand up, speak up. Mm-hmm. And, and really stand out and claim, you know, break the silence of what you've been going through and claim your own life. And yeah. it's, it's such an important piece of it. And if we keep silent about what happened, then we're not really serving our world. Because no. it, there's, even if there was only one person that was touched by our story and was encouraged to, to make the changes themselves, it's worth it. But most of us have seen many people start being changed by by our courage to speak up. So did you tap into any kind of resources or tools or anything that you found that was really, really helpful for you? 
You know, I had tried talking to counselors, but I couldn't tell my story. I could only tell my early trauma from being a child. And then I had to stop the story because it wasn't safe for me to tell anyone. And often, and you know, there's no exaggeration when I tell you this, often the counselors would break down and they would be really upset for me. And I would find myself comforting them. So it was kind of a reverse thing. But it did help me. It helped me in a different way, though. It helped me in a way of saying, it's okay that I'm sad about these things. These things aren't normal. It's not normal to be in hiding. It's not normal to have different names. It's not normal to not tell, to not be able to tell the truth about who you are. And what you, you know, and we're here to make an impact in the world. So I think the number one resource for me, which I think, well, I think all of us will find solace in different things and we'll find healing in different things. But for me, it was the writing of the book because I write longhand. And I wrote over five years. I wrote my whole story out. And at the time, I wasn't actually sure I was going to publish. I still did not use his name in the book because I was so afraid of him. I was so afraid he would find me. He had, you know, there had been many close calls while I had been in hiding. And so I was so terrified of the outcome of that. So long story short is... About a year before, well, when I was finished, I decided, you know what, there's something to be said of the story, and I did move forward. And typing it in was another part of the healing for me, because typing it in meant it was going from my personal, you know, my story, my secret story, which, by the way, when I wrote, hand wrote, I would take each journal and I would put it in, a, you know, in the drawer, you have those drawer liners, I would stick it underneath the drawer liner because for fear that someone would find that and also just what would people think if they knew my story so anyways when I decided to publish I think that was another piece just even releasing that story to someone else so they could read it in which case the person that read it she herself was overcome and was very motivated to help me get the story out there so yeah I think a lot of it was self to be quite honest and also watching other women because I've worked with women in business for so long watching those women and helping them be successful allowed me to see that their same issues were my issues like they had self-doubt really I thought they were perfect and they didn't see themselves as so and so that's what helped me also to get past my own fear of judgment fear and shame guilt right well, I found for myself, you know, just as you have, that writing my story has been the sing one of the most amazing transformations for me. It's brewed inside me for a long time, and the fear just, yeah. you know, fear is a huge thing. And by breaking through the fear, and then, and then when you lay it, you kind of just lay bare your soul to the whole world. You know, this is this is me. Yeah. <laughs> but there's something very, very strengthening about that. And then as we speak it, and it, you know, mo most of us have gone on to speak publicly. And each time you do it, it's another healing piece that that just kind of, you know, it's all mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So if you um, were to speak with a woman that that is just starting through this process of re recognizing that. They're tired of that that heavy weight that that weighs them down and the the burden of that secret that they've kept deep within them. What would you say to them? Well, I say a couple of things. But one of the things I I'm known for, and it is stand on your story and not in it, because we're here. You know, for someone who's crossed like yourself, when I say crossed over, crossed over that fear and that guilt, okay? Because that's its own rebirth, okay? So we've had that experience of being on the awful side. And so, you know, for those of you that are watching, if you're struggling, I want you to know that you're not here for that story. That's just a part of who you are. It, it, it helps make us who we are. It helps us be more empathetic, more approachable, more whatever. However... We were not born to live that whole story our whole life. That, that was just who or what happened at the time. Whether it took place over years or not is irrelevant. What's relevant is what you do with it. So I believe not everyone is intended to share their story as we do and speak, speak about it. You know, even as you said that, I remember my very first few times speaking. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> one thing releasing the book which was very dramatic for me I was like oh I hit that it's scary okay um 
but speaking. I wasn't used to being people being quiet. I'd been a speaker for a long time, and I wasn't used to people being quiet at reverence. I was used to using humor and a bunch of other things. Not you've seen me speak, so you know I still use humor, but I use it in only obviously in appropriate places. But we are here to do something so much bigger than what has happened. We're here to serve in a way that will impact others' lives. And my, you know, for me, the saddest thing in, on the planet, the saddest stories are the ones, you know, we've heard this all, they take the story to the grave, they take their dreams to the grave. My mom never recovered, and I sat with her in hospice those last 30 days. It is my mission, my responsibility to tell women that you are not your story. You need to stand on it. Don't stand in it because that's how we help others. And you said something so, um, so truthful, so poignant, so truthful, so, you know, right on point. And that is people get courage from those of us that do. Just like anything we learn, whether it's training, you know, someone needs sales training, for example. Well, they weren't always good. The people that are training weren't always good salespeople. No. People get, you know, personal development because they look at someone and they go, wow, she looks like she's got it all going on. And she doesn't? No, none of us do. <laughs> we all need to go through. So my story to anyone watching is for the love that all that is holy, do what you're intended to do. Because you already know it. It's in your heart. It's but something that just brews inside of you. And you know, no matter, you know, we have, I have a graphic that I use where it's one, gla one eyeglass, like a pair of um, sunglasses, it's the shame that they don't see and the shame that they do not know. It's written right on the sunglasses. Yeah. And that always struck me because I think we live in shame so much of our, of our lives because it's so hard, especially if we've gone through some very traumatic things. We don't get what we're supposed to do about it. But yet there's, I have never felt that there's even one person that's born to this earth that is a bad person. No, I think inherently people are good. Even the person who did what he did to me, yeah. I'll tell you, there were four boys. Only one of them was not charged with some sort of sexual deviant type of crime. Uh, you know, he was the only one who went on that we know of. That he, one of his brothers was suspected as being involved as well in some of the murders. Uh, you know, uh, those little boys did not, they were born innocent. That is how I forgave him. I went to the hospital where he was born because my daughter happened to be born in the same hospital. And I remember the day that that brand new, beautiful little shiny object, my daughter, came and I saw her and she, you know, full of promise, innocence, and, you know, possibility. There were four boys born. This is not, this is not a chemical imbalance situation. This is a situation that these children themselves faced huge trauma. That's what allowed me to forgive him. That's like, right. That, that was the... For me, that was like, it was the aha moment in my life. You know, it's over. It's over, he's gone, but it's over, right? And I mean, look what's happened as a result of that. And I'm healthier because of it. Oh, I think anybody that finally makes the decision to stand up, they become much healthier. I'm healthier now than I've ever been in my life. Yeah. And I'm happier by far. You yeah. Know? It so shows with you. It so shows because when we decide enough's enough, and we decide to move forward, not in a negative way, but to move forward to do what we're intended to do, it opens up every door. It does. It, it, there's so many things. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're 20 years old or you're 80 years old. You're right. You're absolutely you're right. Speak up. You know, make the changes. And it doesn't have to be writing. It can be using music. It can be using art. It can be any kind of, you know, whatever the tool is that you find. Yeah. That works for you, do it. You know, but you, even even to be just happier and healthier for the sake of your family and well, those that are around. Right. Like, what is what is the legacy that you change when you do that? You know, from our family. My daughter and I were just talking about this. She's the first child. I was too scared to go to university. I ended up getting two diplomas, but I was the first one to go to post secondary. She's the first one to graduate from. University. She writes policy for the government. I don't even know what that means. Okay, I just know that she's brilliant and <laughs> broke the cycle that education was important. Education is important. That you can be 
you know, if you choose to do things and you choose to do the work, you can do. I'm not saying that university is all the end and be all, but in our family, it was a big deal. So think about that. That's, if all I ever did was change that so my children, who are now touching other lives, then that's good enough to do whatever it is that we are to do is more than good enough because that will impact the world in a positive way. If we do. And it's, it's called leading by example. About two months before he took his life, he looked at me and he said, you broke the cycle of abuse in our family. Wow. You know, That's powerful. it's powerful. And that was his gift. It was yes. his gift for our children, for those in our family, for our communities. If we can heal and be well, then we impact the world in whatever way that we can. Even if we don't go out and tell the world, what we've done, just being happier and, and more together makes a difference because that changes the vibrational flow of our earth. It totally does. And there's, there's such joy in tragedy. That's the best way I can say it because, you know, knowing your story. And that's not my story. So, uh, you see, I had more stranger danger. And so that's a different type of process, okay? Then, so I have such admiration for anyone who's walked in your shoes, okay, and I know lots of women because they come and talk to me every time I speak because I talk about what has happened. Uh, I have admiration and respect and a deep compassion, not pity, I don't feel pity because I don't want people pitying me, uh, but I have admiration because home is supposed to be safe, as you know. And when home isn't safe and the people that are supposed to love you are not safe for you. That's a big problem for me, and it, and it would be a big problem for anyone. That's why I'm so dedicated to raising money for Little Warriors and because I'm a girl, because there are children, as you know, that will go to bed tonight that will be scared that when they go to bed. What happens? What's going to happen? To me? Or not even necessarily bed, but that tends to be a, a sort of the witching hour. I think that when we stand, though, and we tell our stories, we empower not through just courage, although yes, we do, but we empower others to take their stand to say, hey, enough's enough, you know, and for myself, I'm just, I have such a sense of responsibility, and that's why I want to touch 13.1 million lives. I'm completely committed to doing that, and this is the kind of thing, what you're doing, you know, we met because I stood up. I didn't know. I mean, if you had told me back in 2013, you're going to release a book. By the way, it's going to be awarded three times internationally a bronze medal for excellence in writing. I'm dyslexic, okay? So, yes, I have editors. Yes, I do. <laughs> That's normal. Everybody should, by the way, if you have a book. Um, but here's the bottom line. I had no idea where this thing was going. And I will tell you, there are still days I go, oh, my gosh, how did this happen? Like, how does this happen? You know how it happens? You said it earlier. You stand up. I say you also step up. And you decide to stand out for yourself in your life. It doesn't matter if it goes to the world or if it just goes to your family. Because, by the way, your family embraces the world anyway. So, you know, it's whether we're, you know, our relationships with ourselves change everything. And we can't get right with ourselves if we're carrying around a bunch of stuff. No. It's like a heavy cloud that layers over you that, that – that keeps you just like bottled up to where you can't function the right way. And even, you know, for me, it was, I couldn't even laugh at jokes. I didn't know how to laugh at jokes. Nothing was funny. No, I was way, way, way serious. And now when I laugh, I'm laughing at stuff. I'm like, who is that? You know, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Did you hear me laugh? You know? <laughs> that's so true. I mean, it's funny because those of us have been through this. We, we have, similar patterns, right? And mm -hmm. so everything had to be serious all the time because life was serious. It didn't matter how funny it was, it was so serious, right? Yeah. yeah. I totally get it's so funny, you know, we're cut from the same cloth really, but I think all of us that have been through that kind of trauma, any kind of trauma, it it doesn't even have to be that. We have, you know, it's it's at at the cellular level until we decide to let go of it too. And, well, and, and that's the message, too, that I've been putting out is abuse is abuse. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what kind of abuse it is. It is abuse no matter what kind it is. And I have seen in my interviews with women where it's been a tiny thing that has happened to them that has just impacted their lives for forever until they finally made a decision to 
to do something about that. Mm -hmm. So we're not here to judge the amount of abuse. We're not here to judge, well, that was just so little, you know, that why are you letting it impact your life? That's not up to us to do, but what our message is, is that let's stand up, stand strong, and heal. We can thrive. We can be so well. We can make an impact on the world, and that's what this whole thing's about: is to share. Come on, let's let's you know, let's be happy. Let's be joyful. Let's make a difference. Yeah, I totally agree. Huh? That that's such a a very good point because I'm sure you've heard this too when you're speaking. Oh, well, my story wasn't as big as yours. It's not relevant, right? You know what? Your norm is your norm. The reason that we are our story stuck with us is that was our norm, okay? So all I'm saying is you're out, I, you know, preaching to the converted because I so believe this, I so get it. And it doesn't, look, it was the divorce that almost derailed me, not the trying to survive Mr. The, I used to call him the bad man, not him. It was the, that second divorce that almost took me off, my off, like just, I can't do this anymore, right? And I think it was that it was a tipping point in my life. It was the time that I just decided enough was enough. And so it's not relevant. It doesn't matter whether it's you lost a job, you, you know, maybe someone in your life said something horrific to you or, or just betrayed you in some, it's not a small way, but it is, you know, if you measure against others, first of all, stop comparing because it's not relevant. No, it's not relevant. It's who we are, right? And so I, you know what? I love the work you're doing and I love this type of conversation because this type of conversation is real and it owns the fact, it, you know, it makes us stand for what we believe in and you can't hide, which I don't do hiding anyway. I did forever, but I don't anymore. Now it's like, here I am, take it or leave it. <laughs> you know, when you said we put it out there, I used to say I was figuratively naked <laughs> in front of you once the book came out because you know everything about my story. Like, yes, I do. And you know, for me, um, public speaking has some, been something I have so taught, shied away from, and I've been standing up and speaking a lot more lately, and I'm still kind of, <laughs> and yet when you look out at the audience and you start speaking and you hear, <gasps> and then you see the tears, one room, there was supposed to be 20, and there was only eight that showed up for this, this um, time I was speaking, half of the room raised their hand that yeah. they had been through something like this. That, that is just, you know what, come on, let's, let's, let's change this. Mm -hmm. um, even if we can't change that the abuse happened, well, there's no way to do that, but create the awareness and create the knowledge that we can be well, you know, and that's the key. That's the real key. And hopefully we can, by the raising of the awareness and the stories getting out there, that it will create more awareness as to what signs to look for in little one in young people, little ones, or or even somebody that's an adult going through in a domestic violence situation. That those of us that care can watch for the telltale signs. You yeah. know, and yeah. oh, I, I so agree. And you know, when you talk about numbers, it's actually so much higher than we actually know because lots of people don't report. They don't report, you know, even domestic violence or, you know, people will discount emotional abuse. Emotional abuse at times can be so much harder for whatever reason it sticks deeper in some way. And for some people, I'm just saying, so half the time, but just even on assault, uh, sexual, uh, sexual abuse or sexual assault, more than half of people don't report it. So interesting, if you had eight and there were four, were, was that only four, or was it actually six? I'm not I not tend to think that because I know that there are a lot of people, a lot of women, or a lot of boys too, because it, the yeah. statistics say one in three girls and one in five boys. I think there's many that have gone to the grave without telling, yeah. and I think there's many in our environment today that that will never speak up. Exactly. Shame around it, right? It, it, yeah. Society-wise, there's still the stigma. It's kind of like mental illness. There's a lot of stigma around mental illness. And I think it would be even harder if it's family-oriented. I had a hard time as a foster parent. I had a really hard time because I felt like I did something to deserve it. Mm -hmm. And he, 
he knew how to play that card so well. He told me no one would believe me, like all those things, all those stories. Um, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty rough. It was pretty brutal. And so, yeah, you know, I think it's actually, I think it's one and two. And I can tell you what, I can now say luckily that I can count 10 women that told me nothing has ever happened to them. Nothing. Now that's 10 out of thousands of women I know. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a brush, you know, someone touching you or saying something inappropriately. Like, you know, not to dwell on that side, but what I'm saying is, like you said, abuse or emotional distress or trauma comes in many, many forms. It could be the loss of a dream. And I think what you're doing is allowing people to re-examine, uh, to challenge, to question, why are they where they're at right now? And what's going on with that? I attended an event um, this past weekend where it was on public speaking and each of us in the audience, there was about 70 of us, um, were asked to come to and speak in front of the audience for five minutes. And what struck me is the stories that people were telling. We had five minutes and some of these stories were like, and yet in an audience, a room full of people. We have no idea that, you know, what people have gone through to be where they are today. And the stories that were so, I mean, it just kind of took your breath away. Yeah. Um, and there were all different kinds of stories, but very life-changing, Where what led them to where they are today. We weren't asked to speak about what changed us. We were, we were given any topic we could talk about. I would say nine out of ten were on the subject of, of something that, really changed their lives and they were willing to speak up about it. Wow. That's, that's so important and it's so it's, true that we don't know where people are. You know, I, I like to say come to the table, you mm -hmm. know, when we do our events. Come to the table with your expectations, your intentions. Um, but, you know, when you come to the table, you bring all of you. You don't just bring the joy in your life. You bring your whole, your being come. If we're still stuck in the story, we don't tend to bring as much joy. That's the best way I can say that. That's right? true. You know, so come to the table ready to to take the things that you need so that you can live the life you dream. That's when we gather, that's really what we're talking about, so that they can magnify those areas of their life, you know, in their relationships and in their business or career. But we can't do that unless we identify and move past what's going on or what has gone on. Let me rephrase that. I've always felt that, you know, or not always felt, because um, just as I've come to this point where I told my story, that we write, we, we share our stories, we write our stories, so that we can create a new story for ourselves. I love that, yeah. So, thank you, Joe, for this beautiful time that we've had to speak together, and I, I think that, you know, I'm looking forward to um, our event coming up and all the cool things that we have going, but thank you for taking this time. Oh, thank you, and I can't wait till we gather in Phoenix and uh, we help elevate, you know, so we share and we support, we elevate others and encourage them to step fully into who they are because, wow, what happens? Like, look at yourself, the changes since you decided to own it. Same for myself. I mean, seriously, I can't believe I'm going to another award thing. They're, they're looking at, you know, the book is uh, being turned into a production, so who knew? Frock Off Living Undisguised was just my way of letting go of everything. But when we gather, I can't wait because you know what happens, the transformations that happen and the sharing that goes on. Well, um, they say your event that I went to in Canada not so many months ago was one of the best things that ever happened to me because, because of the sharing, because of the intimacy of it and the sharing as a group and the strength that I got from it. That kind of just helped me finally get to that place. Oh, I love that. You were there. You, it's just, you know, if we can be, as you know, when we, when we gather, if we can be the catalyst to help somebody else reclaim, create their own demarcation line, then we've done our job. So, yeah, for sure. Thank you for everything you do, hon. I'm so happy for you, and I'm so proud of you for, for taking the reins and making this so much bigger. Like you could have just told your story, but you've made this so much more, so much bigger. You know, one book can be a business. Several books can also be a business, but what I'm saying is, you know, the story of our lives can change so many lives. So thank you again.
This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting. Can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world? We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this we choose to thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.